So can you just pull your chairs a little bit forward and come and join? Come on, Gibbon. <laughs> This is just going to be a bit of fun. I think we need a bit of fun. Ian? Just, yeah, just uh, take one and come forward. Brilliant. Yes, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Please come in. Are you coming into the circle? Okay, you're thinking about it? Okay. Yes. How to join this circle? Come in. You just take a chair. Is it a workshop? Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sit down. Sure. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> Thanks, Arosha. <laughs> okay. What time? All right. Uh, well, it's a kind of circle, so welcome to it. <laughs> and thanks very much for coming. Uh, so this session is called Human Beings United, because I think it's something that kind of uh, is needed at the moment. So I would like to invite you all to close your eyes. Go on. Just a little bit of quiet. Right, let me set the scene. The world is in chaos. <laughs> a chaos that we human beings have created and that we human beings maintain and nourish. Violence of all sorts, discrimination, poverty, you know it all, corruption, climate change, and the destruction of our beautiful world. All the main of human beings and we can't seem to do anything about it. These meetings, like the one we are at, show us really clearly that us polishing the structure may make some little differences here and there, but it won't change anything radically. So we have to go into why there's such disorder in the world and ask ourselves really seriously is the outer disorder different from our inner disorder at all, or is it one movement? Is the outer disorder a result of our inner disorder? And if so, what does that mean for solutions? So disorder arises from conflict, and the conflict arises from the divisions we've made up ourselves, divisions of nations, beliefs, ideology of me and the other of human beings and nature. All of them false divisions, but look at the effect that that has had on our relationships with other beings and our relationships with other species, our relationships with nature. So, what does it mean? In, it means we have to start doing things radically different. So what better time or place to start than right here and now? by expressing ourselves from the heart, completely spontaneously, not from a perspective of a tradition or a, of a company or of an organization or of even of a particular community, but simply as a human being. 
Because when we are touched, like maybe some of you were yesterday when we heard the throat singers, for instance, it makes us know that we are alive and that we are human because they are able to touch us because their art or their practice is, is from a place, a really deep place, and it touches us in that place. So it's a kind of like our soft spot. And so if we can act as human beings from that space, then it changes everything. Can we have the next slide up, please? So you can open your eyes and have a look up there at these word clouds. And from these word clouds, the words are going to drop in this bowl. <laughs> you see what I've done there? So um, here's what's going to happen. We're all going to come into the middle and choose a raindrop, which is a word. And then you're going to come back and sit down. You reflect on this word. I don't know if anybody has done a talking circle before, but it's really spontaneous. And just when you feel that you have something to say, inspired by the word that you choose, you come in the middle, you take the microphone, you say it, or you express it in some way. It doesn't have to be wor more words. It could be dance, it could be song, it could be a joke, it could be whatever you like. It could be very short, it could be a little bit more detailed, whatever. Whatever comes to heart spontaneously. Can we act like that um, and maybe have a chance of changing the world? So I invite you all to come into the middle and get a raindrop. Okay, reflect, just take a moment, let's take a moment just to reflect on your word. And when something comes and you want to share it really spontaneously, not from any perspective, just from your heart, come in the middle and share. Okay, I've got the word impermanence. I didn't actually know there was a word impermanence. Um, the only thing that comes to mind is that we're only here for a speck of time on the planet and we've already made rather a big mess. So um, in this moment, we need to do something. Separation. I lost anxiety. 
I wish I would have gotten something more positive, but as, as a youth representative, I guess this is something, <laughs> it was kind of obvious of a word for a young person. I feel right uh, before I came here, I was making a social media post about um, joining this campaign for a new deal for nature. And what I wrote that I'm really excited about the coming days, but I'm also desperately afraid of, are we able to do this? And I don't know if some of you can recognize the feeling of really not wanting to open the news in the morning because you are sure that whatever there is on the news, there will be something bad and you will just feel worse for reading them. And I hope, I hope sometime in the future there could be a day when I wouldn't have to think about it. I could just open the news and feel hopeful about the future and hopeful about humanity and not have to worry about what I will be reading there. Um, the word I chose was wisdom, and I think that this word, to me, is something that we're all hope maybe all of us are striving for in this convention, hoping that wisdom is what leading is leading this convention, and hopefully this wisdom is something that I personally am striving to obtain to consider non-human life, to consider generations beyond my own generations that. I, have to deal with issues that we're presenting to them. Um, so I think that that's kind of just what comes to mind with wisdom. Um, the word that I got was abundance. And uh, for me, I feel that nature is so abundant. It manifests in so many different places in so many different forms. Um, it kind of motivates me uh, to fight a little more to preserve it and in, in, in all its abundance. I got the word action, and I just keep thinking about how we've been waiting and preparing and planning for three years, uh, for first for 2020, and then to get here this week. Um, and I'm really feeling hopeful that despite the challenges, we will reach some resolution this week. But even if that remains complicated, I know that there are a lot of people who are committed to a nature positive future and to the 30% and will move forward with action regardless. So when things feel dire, that, that helps me feel hopeful. Um, my word is belief. And when I first saw it, um, my instinctive reaction is um, have belief in human nature um, and believe that we have it within us, um, all the answers and wisdom to face the future and um, create a positive one for us and our generations ahead. I picked up the word wonderment, and I think of kind of the wonder you feel being present in a moment, rather than we spend so much time thinking forward and worrying about the future. And the word wonderment to me means that, that feeling of just taking in the world and experiences as you feel them. Sorry, my English is so bad. Uh, my word is happiness. <clears throat> I think that the people need more happiness. And I think that we forget, the, the, forget that nature is happiness. Two. So I picked uh, compassion, and I feel it's a two-sided affair. 
the feel to have compassion for, for nature and the people within that nature. I think we need to, to have that double-sided coin to say how do we balance the, the compassion so that nature is part of us and also part of nature and not one side of the, the coin winning. So compassion becomes key. Thank you. Um, my word is connected. Um, my first thought when I received this is that we are all connecting physically in person here. Um, but also we are literally all connected to nature, to other forms of life here on earth. And um, these words are connected because the way that we interact with them and live by them through compassion or um, I see harmony here or anxiety, whatever it may be, it all relates to everything that we do and how we show up in the world um, and with each other. So I hope that we can remain connected and build even further connections throughout this time here together and as we move forward in, the, in our time here. Yeah, the word I picked up is meaningless, which is also not a very um, uh, upbeat or um, inspiring word, obviously, but I, I think it does connect to some of what others have mentioned. And what occurred to me was the variety of ways we can find meaning in um, our work, mo motivation for it, and then the meaning in, in what we're doing, both in terms of um, the reason we're doing it and the act of doing it being meaningful in and of itself, but then also the outcomes. And so those two pieces in particular came to mind. And with the respect to this conference, I think sometimes the um, words can come across in certain contexts as, as, as meaningless if they aren't connected to action. And so I think we do hope for the words that are spoken and agreed upon to lead to meaningful action. Um, but also it came to mind that the act of doing the work that we are is meaningful in itself too. Uh, the word I picked is uh, fearless. And uh, personally, I think the way human beings have utilized nature is in a way that they are not frightened with the repercussions of what can come after the way they are using nature. So uh, we've been so uh, fearless in, the t in terms of how we utilize nature. And that has brought us to where we are right now. So we really need to use it positively, be brave enough, and uh, come up with uh, or be more ambitious commitments to reverse and halt uh, Badiva's loss. So that's what came to my mind. Greed. There's a lot of greed in the world today, so much so that humans all together being lumped into this idea of being bad humans, destructive humans. But over thousands of years, there are thousands and thousands of indigenous cultures in the world that have lived harmoniously, that still strive to protect lands and waters and air and the spirit of places. And in my own community, our own ancestors have passed on to my elders who have passed on to my dad's elders who my dad said to me and to others many times, nature will provide for our need, but not our greed. I think that's everybody. I just um, related to your word. Another word that was in there was thrifty. And so I'm part Scottish and part from the Philippines, indigenous uh, Filipina. Uh, and from my Scottish side, thrifty uh, was always a kind of negative word, like a negative connotation about you know the Scots being thrifty 
uh, you know, it means kind of mean. Uh, it means they don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, but if you think about it now, I think thrifty is such a positive thing, right? It, because it basically means let's try to um, do with what we what we have, do with you know just what we need, um, and not be constantly looking to the to the future and looking for for stuff. So um, that was the word that I, I would have picked from my little box here. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing. Let's take just a moment because words mm, are something, but words are not the thing, right? So um, it's all about the action now. Um, and I think sometimes silence <laughs> speaks even louder than words. So if we take just one minute together in silence, and then we can go our own ways. And hopefully, if you act always from that soft, soft spot, that place of compassion that links all of us together. Thanks, everybody.